huge difference in terms of residential property and commercial property. Um, do you mind just take us taking us through um, some of these fundamental differences in terms of how they look? And if um, if one is looking at even buying commercial property to let out, what are some of those things that they that are unique to that space and that they may just need to to be aware of before they do something like that? Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it is a weekday, so that means that we are sitting you down and telling you everything and everything property. So if you are interested in what we are about to talk about today, I am sure that you're going to be interested because we are talking tips to buy, to let, um, and, and have success amid the rental boom or the property rental boom currently that is happening in the market. And I'm joined by Megan Ladbrook, who is the general manager at only realty at the only realty group so um do do stick around for the conversation tonight it's going to be a very insightful one so if you're also joining us for the first time a very warm welcome to you if you're joining us uh, on the twitter spaces thank you so much for coming through hopefully you'll stay to the end of the conversation it's going to be a really good one especially if you are thinking of going into the into the buy to let space, uh, maybe you want to buy an apartment and let it out, um, or you're already in that space, maybe you're going to learn something um, tonight that will help you maximize that investment. Megan, thank you so much for joining us, and um, how, how are you doing tonight? No, it's a pleasure. Really, really happy to be here. Always love doing the private property podcasts and, and Facebook Lives. They're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, let's let's just jump right in and start talking um, buy to let and the success rates that you guys uh, are seeing or in your experience have been seeing. Um, do you think that this is still a lucrative investment for a property investor to go into? Or do you think that um, maybe they should start f shifting their focus somewhere else? Well, you firstly asking an um, ex-rental agent, so uh, obviously rentals are our focus. So I'm always going to say that um, it's a good investment. Mm. Um, you know, one of one of the, the key things is if you don't start investing now, um, it's never going to be a good time. So although things are very different at the moment, and obviously post-COVID times um, have been very interesting, we have seen um, quite a shift actually at the moment um, Obviously, the interest rate's just gone up again, so people are now all um, concerned and, and worried about what it's going to be and what it's going to mean for their finances. So, yeah, at the moment, um, I suppose everything's really um, up in the air for people um, who aren't, I suppose, um, seasoned property investors, but I just want to say they shouldn't panic. Um, it's actually a really good time to get into property investment. We're going to see a lot more people looking to rent versus to buy because um, they're just going to be concerned uh, their own finances and affordability might not lend um, lend towards buying at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to see an influx of, of really good tenants. Um, so buy to let is always a good place to be. Mm. No, definitely. And if someone is already in this space and you're already a landlord, um, you already have tenants maybe that, that are occupying one of your properties or maybe you've got vacant um, properties and you're looking to let them out, um, what, would you, what would you say how, how, uh, in terms of this person making it, um, this mode of investment lucrative? What are those um, things that they could do or, or maybe uh, marketing strategies or whatever they could actually adopt now you know, in order for them to... to to increase the profits that they're getting and um, possibly let out those places that are currently vacant? So one of the key things would be to run it like a business. Um, I think a lot of people go into property and they're very good business people and then it comes to property and they think they can in, invest in it. They get a little bit too emotionally attached to the property or to their tenants um, and sometimes it leads to them making decisions which they wouldn't normally make um, in a day-to-day -day business situation. So it's really important to understand what your monthly costs are um, exactly what you need to cover um, and build in a bit of a buffer there for items like maintenance and ongoing improvements and upkeep, which will make your property more attractive to tenants um, and definitely will play a big role in making sure that it's not vacant. 
Um, so that would be my biggest tip. Um, if you think of something as, as a business and you take out the emotion, it, it helps you make uh, more rational decisions when it comes to what's going to be profitable and what's not going to be profitable. Yeah, and you, you know, you said something at the beginning that um, with COVID and um, the different things that are happening in the industry, there's so many interesting things that are coming up and that are changing the way you um, business is being done. Um, do you mind just going through some of those things that the the and some of the trends that you have picked up, and if there are any challenges, maybe let's start focusing on those to say what what are the the challenges that are that are coming out from the current business of the day, and how can one also really try as much as possible to to circumvent them and make sure that then they don't do their business in. So one of the most interesting trends, I think, um, just holistically in, in any industry is the, the rise of working from home. Um, mm -hmm. So if, if you apply that into our space, it's, it's seen um, people moving from different areas um, looking more towards, obviously, there's been a huge um, shift towards immigration and living in an area where you want to live versus where you have to live for work. So that's been a huge shift. And when you look at the, those kinds of trends, one of the, the biggest things that impacts people is the ability to work from home. So things like fiber and Wi-Fi and those kinds of things have become quite attractive uh, to people as tenants. So we've seen a lot of, of landlords actually making a huge effort to so make their, their properties work from home friendly. And by doing that, they've been being able to attract a larger number of, of potential tenants. Um, so, you know, that's been a very interesting space to be in. Um, we've seen people make decisions um, purely on, on whether they, they have the ability to, to have fiber in a property or not. Um, so it's a huge, huge part of, I think, our day to day life now. Um, and even people who are going back into the property um, market as a as a, a tenant versus uh, somebody who's been owning their own home and we've seen a lot of that with the immigration happening and mm -hmm. um, we have seen people who have been property owners now looking to rent um, in the sort of new area of, of choice of living until they get a feel for the space and they want to commit um, so I mean a lot of that is happening at the moment as well so the ability for the understanding in your environment um, and make sure that that they can carry on their day-to-day -day life um, has been a huge trend. One of those challenges that people then need to um, sort of understand is that it's, it's then quite a competitive space because there are a lot of tenants that are looking for properties, um, especially in Gauteng, coastal areas. We've also seen quite um, an uptick in, in places like in Pumalanga, so more of the lifestyle areas. And because there's an influx of tenants and um, the competition for a landlord to find a good tenant um, is, is a little bit fierce. So making sure that your property ticks all of the boxes for your target market, I think is probably the biggest challenge. Mm. And, you know, for, for, for letting or for buying to let, there's, there's a huge difference. And, and this just comes from a layman's looking at it. There's a huge difference in terms of residential property and commercial property. Um, do you mind just take us, taking us through um, some of these fundamental differences in terms of how they look? And if, um, if one is looking at even buying commercial property to let out, what are some of those things that, they, that are unique to that space and that they may just need to, to be aware of before they do something like that? So um, I'm not an expert in commercial, but it's, it's important to understand that the challenges are actually very similar. Mm -hmm. um, in the commercial space, we've seen obviously a lot of downsizing um, from large offices to smaller offices into more flexible spaces. So if I was going to be looking at a buy to let investment in a commercial space, um, I would definitely pay attention to those trends. Something that is possibly a little bit more flexible for your tenants so they can grow with the property as their business grows or grows back into being uh, one where there's full-time um, employees on site. So flexibility, I think, is one of the biggest needs in the commercial space. Um, and just, you know, from, from a landlord's perspective, making sure, again, that the property is very um, conducive to having people um, on site. Um, 
a lot of businesses are not going to want to invest in a big space if there's not enough parking, for instance, for employees. Mm. Um, so parking is a, a sort of a big challenge when it comes to commercial spaces. Again, um, we've seen people that have opted not to buy um, or rent a commercial space purely based on the parking um, and the ability for the employees to be sort of on site and have somewhere to park, somewhere safe to park. Um, Cape Town, again, that's quite a, quite a um, parking is quite a contentious issue. Um, so from a commercial perspective, that's what I would look for. Um, obviously, the needs of your client have to come first and foremost. So again, understanding the space that you're in, what kind of businesses are would be your potential clients. If you're a property investor, you're providing a service, which is the property. Um, so those people, you've got to make sure that if you're in an area where um, maybe small office parks are, are very much needed that's what you should be investing in um, if you're in a, a space where there's a, a great need for commercial large warehouses that's what you should be investing in so I think a little bit of research will go a long way if that's your um, intention is to get into the commercial space but similarly also in residential um, researching what's needed um, where you are and where you're looking to invest um, will tailor make what you're buying if you know the need is the greatest in a specific price range or or um, type of property, um, you'll be able to to make sure that if you're investing in those types of properties, you're probably going to have more demand, and more demand is obviously better for you. Hmm. You know, just before um, in the recent past, rather, um, we've been hearing that it's a it's a buyer's market, and if if you want to buy property, this is the best time because the interest rates are low. And you know, this was before today. Um, do you perceive that now? Um, this 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 is going to change the narrative a bit. I know you said um, earlier that it's still a good time to buy property, but are we going to maybe pre or are we predicting that we pe more more people are now going to stop buying property and um, you know seeing a little bit of um, this impacting the letting market because previously uh, um, people were now leaving rental rental property to go and buy houses and for them to stay in because they yeah. they were just um, generally they they are just people who were letters you know they were they were tenants rather and now I want to be homeowners do we now see this market now fluctuating and maybe also just really creating that um, um, uh, vol volatile um, the the market being volatile. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think we're going to see that. Mm. Um, what's quite exciting, though, is, you know, obviously, when the interest rates were very, very low, I mean, it, just, it was great advertising, you know, lowest, you know, for however many years. And I think people got very caught up into it and didn't really um, think that, you know, it would be um, going up um, so soon, which obviously, you know, is something that you, know, you get we're caught up in the optimism of being a, of a property owner. Um, so we did see a lot of people take that step from being a tenant into to buying their own homes and first time buyers. So it was it was very interesting. Um, a lot of those people have probably overextended themselves um, mm -hmm. and probably can't actually accommodate, uh, you know, another one or two interest rate increases. Besides that, you know, there's municipal increases that are coming into play. So we're anticipating seeing a lot more people that are, are purchasing to let versus purchasing to live in the property themselves. So from that aspect, I think you know that there's going to be a shift there. We're also seeing a lot more people choosing to be tenants, um, even if they can afford to buy. Uh, we're seeing a lot more people choosing that because obviously owning a home, there's costs involved with that, um, which you can limit if you're a, a tenant, you know, the maintenance and, and upkeep and improvements um, will sort of fall to the landlord's responsibility. So we are seeing a lot more of that. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, we always in for interesting times, but as I said at the beginning, um, you know, there's, there's, it's, a, it's a cliche for a reason. It's always, it's always a good time to buy, um, especially if you're going to focus on, on letting the property at the moment. 
Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, and if you just joined us, we are talking tips um, for buy to let success amid the property boom. And I'm sitting with Megan, who is from the, who's the general manager at Only Realty Group. And we're really talking about how you can maximize your investment if you are somebody who's already a property investor, you are a landlord, there are tenants that are living in your property currently. How can you maximize this investment, you know, and how can, and if you're even sitting with um, a vacant properties, how can you ensure that they are let and, you know, you're making money from them and grow your ultimate uh, property portfolio by getting more getting more properties and of course letting those out um i'll take the poll for the date now and um one of the questions that we asked was that would you consider buying a property to rent it out and the first answer that we gave you the first option was was that i'm i'm already doing so um two yes i would or three i wouldn't and um one of our regulars came in guns blazing <laughs> and she uh, martha shingange said she is at one she's already doing so and uh, and of course that's because she is a regular here at the private property family so she has gotten so much insight and she's probably handling or, or managing that property like a boss um kenneth mochella says uh, um, number two he would definitely do that and would be a um a a good way to have extra income. If you'd like to and pose a question or a comment, please do um, send those through right now on our social media pages, and we will try and ensure that we get um, those questions answered. And I had some come through um, earlier, and um, someone is asking with the with the interest rate rising, should I expect a hike in my in my rent if my um, should I expect a hike in my rent if my landlord, um, if my landlord's um, bond price has increased? Should I expect? Oh yeah, they are asking the same thing. Should I expect a rise, um, a rise in their rent because of the in, uh, interest rate rising up? So it does. It does. Firstly, depend on your rental contracts. If you're in a contract for a fixed term, um, and you've got a rental that's set at a specific amount, and um, then for the at least the remainder of your rental contract, you sort of locked into that price and you should be fine unless there's a provision for your landlord increasing the rent um, midterm if there's any expenses that have, have sort of arisen like an interest rate hike or maybe a levy increase. Um, so, so on that, it really depends on what your rental contract says and what situation you're in. Um, in general though, um, you know, we're expecting landlords to try and recover the cost of the, the bond increase, maybe at the next renewal, um, if they're in that cycle. Mm. So you could be faced with a situation where your landlord is going to try and increase the rental to make sure that they're still making their, um, you know, coming out comfortably, whether that's um, breaking even or, or making a small profit on the property. You know, they, they need to sort of maintain that. So we do expect people to sort of increase their expectations for a rental increase accordingly. Um, the flip side of that, you know, if, you've, if you're sitting in a situation where you've got an excellent tenant, um, mm. I'd always advise to try and keep that tenant and be negotiable with your tenant. Make sure that you're accommodating towards their needs. It's not always the easiest to find a replacement tenant um, and you might end up with um, a short vacancy which obviously will cost you maybe far more mm. um, than what you're actually trying to to achieve by increasing the rental sure no definitely uh because you don't want to lose um that that tenant and then sit with an empty yeah, apartment having having a good tenant the 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 key to to success if you're a buy to let investor so yeah. you know keeping yeah, a really definitely. good tenant um, is your prize definitely. number one and I think later on, just before we round up, we will talk a little bit in terms of how a landlord can can um, find a good tenant and if it's good to even have estate agents. But before we, before I jump in on that, let me take this um, this question that also came in from social media where someone is asking, which is better to buy? Is it a standalone house or a sectional title in terms of letting out and managing? In, in your advice, what would you say? Sure, that's a that's a really difficult question to answer. Um, it's really area dependent. Um, different areas lend themselves to different types of property in terms of demand. Um, so that would be something that I would say um, chat to your local estate agents about, um, get an understanding from them what the demand is really like. Obviously, a standalone house, um, you wouldn't have the cost of, of levies. But then there's obviously maybe additional costs that you wouldn't have to factor in if you had a sectional title property, 
related to maybe security. Um, so there's there's really different different pros and different cons for both. Um, neither is better. Again, it depends on what the need in your area, the greatest need. Um, you know, could be student accommodation, uh, it could be flats, it could be houses for, um, you see Cape Town, um, you know, I'm, I'm in Bloberg, we're seeing such an influx of people coming from Gauteng that are looking for um, lifestyle and they're all looking for houses, um, well, majority of them are looking for houses, family houses, so it really depends on your on your area. I would definitely chat to a local estate agent and, and get their insights. Sure. Um, and talking about estate agents, right? No, definitely. And thank you so much for that. And I really hope that um, someone who's watching who's a property investor really takes that advice because that is how we harbor those good relationships and ensure that we are able to really grow our investments while we're also just also um, really giving back. Because, you know, when you are in this kind of, of business where you are giving people accommodation, it's not just also a, a, a financial and monetary transaction. You are legit giving people um, a roof over their heads. So it's important Close. for you to, yeah. to know how, how those relationships can be can be made to work someone is asking my landlord has worked the levies the the estate levies into my rent is this lawful um is it lawful for them to work it into your rent um again i'm going to say it depends on what your contract says um a lot of contracts make provision for the levies or the rental um so if the levy goes up the, it does make provision for the landlord to increase the rent accordingly mm -hmm. um i would have to say i i would need to understand how they've worked it into the rent um a lot of people do so if you're saying for me as a, a property investor and my bond is ten thousand rand the levies are two thousand rand so i'm going to need to rent it out for uh, 14,000 Rand to be in sort of a good position. Um, you could also say that that's working it into the rent. Um, so yeah, I think that's something I'd um, be happy to have a look at it if um, if the viewer wants to maybe message me or email me. Um, I'm happy to have a look at it and, and sort of unpack it a little bit for them. I don't want to answer without seeing you know, the actual um, contract and situation that they're in. Yeah, no, thank you so much for that. And I, I'm guessing they, that's that's the nature of it. It was just really worked into the price of the house. And yeah. now um, that's what they're paying. And, you know, with, with people who live in estates, they share such information, you know. Or maybe randomly yeah. someone comes onto private property to see how much um, the... the the, the the houses or even the, the apartment exactly is going for and yeah the, and i mean it's yeah. it's one of the biggest it's one of the biggest tools that people use mm. so you know they'll go onto private property they'll see what's available in the area sure. they'll see what other people are paying, are paying and they'll use that as a negotiation tool with their landlord so you know mm. it's really important that you educate yourself and see what is available out there and make sure you as a tenant in a bike property um are actually making the right decision for yourself and that maybe the um, property that you're in um, offers you all of the amenities that you need at the price that's that's fair yeah no definitely thank you so much um for that and thank you so much for taking our time to talk to us tonight really enjoyed the conversation tonight and i'm sure that somebody who's watching who oh, is, a who's, who's a property investor is, has gotten su such uh, good information for them to be able to make good decisions in order to grow their portfolio thank you so much and have a good night no, it's a pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me. Bye. And that is how we get to the end of our conversation tonight where we were talking by uh, buying to let property and how you how to be successful tips on how you can be successful in how the property market currently looks and ensuring that you are able to let out that property you know have have good relationships with your tenants so your property never sits vacant thank you so much for joining us tonight we will see you next time right here on the private property podcast 7 p.m on a weekday, that is, this is where you should be. This right here is where you should be seeing my face and we are talking uh, anything and everything property. Thank you and have a great night.